Good morning, everybody. I'm just waiting for some more of you to hop on before I begin, and this is not going to be a long live stream because I have a class <clears throat> in a half hour. <laughs> I'm in a class, actually. I'm not teaching this class. I'm a student. It's my horary class that I've, I've been taking from uh, the School of Traditional Astrology with <clears throat> Deborah Holding. It's amazing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. I am not going to wait anymore. Welcome, everybody. So I uh, I was inspired to do this live stream, of course, just because I was going through my morning, living my life, and something very random and strange, but not bad, happened to me. And my reaction to this really took me by surprise. And it, it got me thinking, you know, what is it about my personality, about my chart that is accounting for this issue? And I wanted to talk about it and open up a conversation and see if you guys have some of these patterns and if you recognize this in yourself. And uh, so good morning, GI Moon. Good morning, Miko. And welcome. Welcome back. For those of you who are you know, repeat watchers to my channel. I appreciate all of you. For those of you who are new here, my name is Maria De Simone. I'm an astrologer. I hope you decide to subscribe to the channel for some really cool astrological content. And of course, if you want to find out more about me and my work, go to insightfulastrology.com. You can schedule a consultation, register for any of my astrology classes. And so, yes, Frankendall, you caught a live. It's going to be a short live because I have class in a half an hour and I don't want to be late for my class. I'm, uh, you know, I'm not just a teacher, I'm an eternal student. And so I do not want to uh, cut out of my own class. I'm learning horary astrology formally, finally, and um, uh, it starts at 12. So, okay, so here's the whole point of this live stream. This morning, I was at the gym, and after the gym, I um, I remembered that I didn't have any fresh fruit to throw into my protein shake. So there's this, um, I think it's a Lidl, Lidl or Aldi, one of those stores that's right in the complex of where my gym is. So I said, all right, let me just run into the store real quick, get some strawberries, bananas, whatever. So I run into the store. I was in and out. I literally just grabbed lemons because I need to have my lemon water every day. I grabbed bananas and strawberries. That was it. It wasn't a whole big shopping trip. I was just, you know, I wanted to make sure I had my protein shake. So I'm online. And as I'm online, the man in front of me was very friendly. Uh, he was saying, good morning to the checkout lady. Uh, and how are you? All that. And, you know, that's not my my typical way. I don't know if it's just my personality, but I'm not going to be all super friendly and chatty to, to strangers. If I know you, I'll talk to you. If I don't know you, I don't feel the need to have a conversation with you. Um, so, but he turned around and he said, good morning to me. Good morning. How are you? So of course, if I'm approached in that way, I'm not going to be a total bitch. I'm, you know, going to talk back. I'm fine. Good morning. How are you? That was it. And, and he had a nice energy about him. He was very friendly. Uh, but it wasn't a flirty friendly. It was a very just nice, nice person friendly. Okay. So I put my stuff down on the conveyor belt. He was paying for his stuff. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he takes um, a five and I think it was like five singles or whatever, a few singles, and he puts it on top of my groceries. And I didn't realize it at first. And he's and he turned around and he said, have a good day. And then I, I looked and my eyes saw that he put money on top of my groceries. And so I immediately realized he was trying to pay for my groceries. This never happened to me before. This was one of those random acts of kindness that you hear about that people should do to brighten someone's day and all of that. But my reaction to it, oh my God, wait until you hear what I did. I saw the money and my instant reaction was, Oh, oh my God. No, 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 no. I can't accept this here. No, take it. And he said, no, 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 this is, this is, this is for you. Don't worry about it. And I was like, there's no reason for this. It's okay. You don't have to, you don't have to give me money. I'm okay. And, um, so I refused to accept it and he refused to take it back. So then I said, 
Um, okay, so I wanted to give it to the checkout girl. I was like, all right, so you're getting a tip here. This is for you. Problem solved. So then she wouldn't take it. She felt uncomfortable because it was meant for me. And the guy was like, no, it, it, it's yours. Or if, if she doesn't want it, you take it. You know, somebody take it. I'm trying to be nice. He was just trying to be nice and do this random act of kindness. I could not accept it. And I think this comes partly from my uh, early childhood programming with my parents, which I'll tell you about in a minute. And I think I insulted him and I didn't mean to insult him. I did not mean to shit all over his kindness or, you know, I, I wasn't gracious. I was not able to accept this. And I am telling you, it was a $7 bill. This was, it was not, uh, you know, hundreds of dollars in groceries. It was bananas, strawberries, and lemons. It was seven bucks. And I could not accept it from a total stranger. It felt so wrong and so icky. And I felt like, I don't deserve this. Why are you giving this to me? Go pay for the single mother with her kids over there. Go pay for somebody else. You know, the homeless guy, D don't pay for me. I could pay for my groceries. I don't deserve this. I shouldn't be getting this. So I refused to take it. The checkout girl refused to take it. He ended up taking back the money and he was trying to be, you know, dignified about it. And he was like, you know, you just, you're supposed to help people. That's all. And he was just trying to be a nice guy. And I felt like a total shithead, but he left the store. I paid for my groceries. I went out into the parking lot, hoping to see him so that I could apologize to him for my douchiness. And I didn't see him. So there's no way for me to apologize for, you know, being unable to accept his kindness and his help. But um, I got to thinking about this and this is a pattern in my personality. And astrologically, I am wondering if any of you have this. So my, one of my teachers, Noel Till, when I was in his master's certification class, he taught us something so fascinating about the 11th house in astrology and the fifth house axis. And this is a modern astrology. You will not find any of this in traditional texts. It doesn't exist. This is modern astro psychological astrology theory, okay? So this is more humanistic. And so basically he talks about the fifth house as the house of love given, where you give love, and the 11th house as the uh, house of love received, where you receive love. And he spoke to us as students about in client in, in clients charts or in your own birth chart whenever the planet saturn is configured to the 11th house whether it is the ruler of the 11th house or it is in the 11th house the native has a significant problem inability to receive love and I have found that to be true when I talk to clients who have that pattern. And it just so happens that in my birth chart, I have Aquarius on the cusp of the 11th house. So traditionally, Saturn does rule my 11th house. And that, I think, is one contact that makes it really hard to receive love, to receive help. Another issue, I think, for me, another barrier to receiving love and help and compliments. Oh, my, I can't take compliments. I am so awkward. I, I'm genuinely awkward when I get complimented by anybody on my physical appearance or if somebody compliments me and it's about anything other than if it's if if it's if it's about my work, like when I get emails from my I get emails all the time from students and, and clients about, oh, you're you're a great teacher. You're really a wonderful teacher. And nice, really kind words about my teaching ability and my consulting skills, those kinds of compliments I could take because it's about the work. It's about, uh, it's about something that I feel is actually outside of me uh, and, and a skill that I think is it's working through me and divinely inspired. So I don't feel like it's a personal compliment, even though they might mean it as a personal compliment. I don't take it that way. I take it as you know, I really, my heart fills with joy because I feel like I'm being complimented for fulfilling my purpose in life. That's so I can accept those kinds of compliments. But when, uh, you know, somebody compliments my physical appearance or somebody compliments me in another way, that's really, really personal. I get so awkward and I can't receive it. I don't know how to respond. I genuinely become 
a dumbass. I do not know how to respond to a compliment. I can't accept it. I can't accept help or kindness or compliments. So another astrological barrier to this is if you have a Venus Saturn hard aspect in your birth chart, whether it's the square or the opposition and sometimes the conjunction. And this aspect, I do have Venus square Saturn and that uh, Saturn can actually block the person's ability to feel worthy of love, of compliments, of beauty, pleasure, goodness. And Venus Saturn people tend to deny themselves pleasure or goodness in some capacity. Like for example, I will very rarely spend money on myself for clothes. For me to go clothes shopping, it takes, I mean, I'm going to Italy the end of June. And so I have to buy summer dresses now and bathing suits and, and, and new walking shoes and walking sandals. And I'm pissed. I'm annoyed about this. I am not the girly girl who's excited about this. I'm genuinely annoyed about this because I have to spend money on myself and I have no choice because I'm going to Italy and I need the proper clothes when I go away. And I would not be spending money on myself unless I had no choice. I will gladly spend money on my children, on my house, on books, on education, on, on other things that I value, but myself, very, like, look, I don't get my nails done unless it's summer, unless I'm going out someplace, unless I have something to do. I am just not, I'm very, I, I deny myself that type of, of, I guess, beauty, pleasure, goodness. And I think that is the Venus Saturn at, at play here. And I wonder if you guys have that similarity. So the Venus Saturn exchange makes it difficult for you to accept goodness uh, because at your core, you somehow feel like you don't deserve it. And that's an issue. That's a karmic issue that we have to overcome and work through. Uh, when you earn something, then you feel like you deserve the compliment. And that's why I think I have no problem when I'm complimented for my work because I feel like I've earned that. But if you're just complimenting me and saying, oh my God, you look gorgeous in that dress or, oh my gosh, you know, that, it's like, what did I do to deserve that? I, I didn't do anything, you know? So it, it's hard for Venus, Saturn people to justify those types of compliments. So, uh, so the other part about this is that Venus for me is an Aries and the Aries archetype, it is very hard for Aries types to accept help because Aries is the person who takes the initiative, who does, who feels like she has to be Wonder Woman and do it all and be courageous and be independent and not need anyone. And so again, my self-worth, Venus and Aries, is very much based on that. And anything that blocks that, I feel like I can't, I, I'm not worthy of something if I have to accept help. So th all of this, I think astrologically is the explanation for why this man who just wanted to demonstrate a random act of kindness to a stranger, which was so beautiful, so sweet, I rejected it. I outright rejected it. And I, my skin was crawling. I was so uncomfortable with this situation. And I'm reminded of, so when I was a child growing up, my parents were very pr proud, but um, I think it was more of a point of honor, okay? So my father especially, to this day, he's still alive, and, you know, in his thick, broken Ital Italian accent, he will always say, he trained me from a young child, he would say, uh, you always get even with people, You uh, and, and you're not going to understand this. You're going to think this is revenge, but it's not. When he says in, in his, you know, with the broken English, he says, well, if this person does something for you, Maria, you have to get even, make sure you get even. What he meant, what he means by that is you do not accept help from somebody without paying them back in some capacity. You always have to make it equal, make it right. Don't ever accept help accept something from somebody else without repaying them in some way. And so this, I think for him, the pride there, it's, it's a point of honor. It's not so much an ego thing for my father. I really think he means it as a point of honor. 
He, he taught us to not take charity, to not take anything from somebody. And if somebody does something nice for you, you have to get back at them. You have to do something even better for them. And I was taught that from a young age. So that imprinting makes it hard to accept help or accept anything from somebody without feeling like I owe you something now. I have to level the playing field somehow. I cannot just accept charity. And, um, and my mother would never let me and my uh, sister wear hand-me-downs or wear anything that anybody wanted to give us. So like people wanted to, you know, just in the community, not because we were necessarily poor, but uh, because people just want to give their things that they don't need anymore, like toys that they don't need or clothes they don't need. My mother would never accept it from anyone. And she was insulted and she taught us to feel insulted if somebody tried to give us their clothes. And to this day, the only person that I will ever share clothes with is my own daughter. I cannot accept clothes or uh, used things from people. I, I just, it's, it's a block. I cannot accept it. And so all of these energies combined with um, astrological signatures and childhood imprinting, it just makes it so hard for me to receive help. Now I'm going to tell you another story. I'm just, Frank and Dahl is saying, can't block the blessings. I had issues with this also from growing up. Miko said, I think I would have done the same thing. Um, thriller kid is saying, I bet he was a Christian man. Could have been. I don't know. He didn't say anything about God or anything like that. He was just kind. So I just don't know. Uh, so GI Moon is saying good parenting. Thank you. <laughs> So, uh, okay, now I'm going to tell you another story. And, and this happened. So some of you have been following me in my work for many, many years. Some of you are just brand new. And, and so I don't know if any of you on this live stream right now were following my work back in 2012. In 2012, because of where I lived in New York, I was very personally hit by Hurricane Sandy. My whole my home was flooded, and I was uh, rendered homeless. My whole first floor was flooded, and on my first floor was my office. I lost everything, all of my books, my client files, my um, computer. I lost everything on my first floor: washer, dryer, the you know whatever clothes, goods, all that. And because the boiler was on the first floor and the heating and all that, and it was the entire first floor, there was, I think, eight feet of water in uh, because the cars were covered, the garage, everything. My tenant's first floor apartment completely flooded. They came upstairs to stay. I had a, there were old people. Uh, I had to bring them upstairs with their dog. Otherwise, they literally would have drowned. So I was homeless. My daughter says we weren't homeless. She says we were home challenged. But to me, I felt homeless. And it was almost three months, if I'm remembering correctly, two or three months before I was able to move back into my home. And during that time period, I had to live with family and it was devastating because I couldn't work. I lost everything. I, I could not work. I had all of these things in my home that I had to replace, you know, a washer dryer, furniture, office furniture, uh, clothes, things like that. And shoes, all you know, all the shoes were lost. And so I had a student, a client, um, and a student of mine then. Her name was Darlene. She started a GoFundMe page back then for me on my behalf. And she marketed it on social media. And many of my students and my clients participated in this GoFundMe. And when I first found out she was doing it, I had that same reaction that I had today online at the grocery store when the man tried to give me money. My first reaction, and I'm telling you, I was down and out. I was homeless. And my first reaction was, no, 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 I cannot accept this. This is charity. This I can't, I can't take handouts. I can't do it. And then there was another astrologer. Her name is Amanda, and I can't remember her last name for the life of me, but she wrote a book called The Power of Receiving. And she sent me this book. And she said, Maria, there is grace in understanding when you are in a cycle in your life to give and when you are in a cycle of life to receive. And it is your time to receive you will be able to pay this back universally in a different way at a different time. And I read that book 
And I saw this GoFundMe just happen beyond my control. And I said, and I ended up becoming very grateful to the woman who started it because, and, and then I ended up putting it in my, I bit my, um, my, my pride. Like I, I just shut my pride down and I put it in my newsletter, which I never imagined I would, cause I felt like a beggar. I literally felt like a beggar and I put it in my newsletter despite my feelings. And I said, okay, I'm just going to give this up to the universe. And that GoFundMe page, I think it made me about $15,000 at that time. And it tied, it, it got me through that hardship. It allowed me to replace my washer, my dryer, my office furniture, my new computer, um, you know, some books and, and things for the kids that were lost. And I was so grateful, but that feeling of, I don't deserve this lingered so strong, even after reading that book, even after talking to spiritual people about the power of receiving, I felt like I had to overcompensate. And these people who were just generously giving me a donation without any expectation of anything in return, I found myself emailing these people and feeling like I owed them something because my father taught me, you have to get even. And you know, this is a little stupid thing that's ingrained in my brain, but I can't let it go. And I felt like I had to get even with all these people or as many of them as possible. So I started offering free memberships. I have a website membership option and I've had it for years. And there's different tiers of membership where you could get free videos and free reports and discounts on consultations. So I remember it, I, it was as many people as I could get in contact with. I gave them free memberships to my website so that I felt like I wasn't taking charity, that I wasn't taking a handout. And these people weren't asking for that. They weren't expecting it. Um, some of them, you know, uh, were very happy because they loved astrology. And so they enjoyed the content and, and all of that. But certainly nobody was asking me to do anything. They genuinely just wanted to help me at a really hard time in my life. And it was so appreciated, but I couldn't accept the help without feeling like I owed them something. I couldn't sleep at night. I could could not sleep. It was bothering me so much because it felt like it was so much money and too generous. And who was I? Why, why did I deserve this? Why did I get this? Such a, a, a real life astrology situation. And because of what happened this morning, I just wanted to come on and talk about it. And I'm getting so many of, of your comments. Some really, oh, Christina is saying, Maria, you are a great storyteller. Thanks. <laughs> Um, okay. Um, uh, rec rally, Scorpio rising here, same type of experiences. Okay. So you can relate. Um, uh, so let me know in the comments, if you've watched this video, if you, in your birth chart, if you have any of these signatures that I believe makes it very difficult for you to receive help, receive love, accept compliments, accept that you deserve good things. And those astrological patterns are your 11th house. If your 11th house ruler is, it's if it's ruled by Saturn or if planet Saturn is in your 11th house, you have a hard time receiving love. If you have a Venus Saturn hard aspect, you most likely have the same sim similar issue. And for those of you who are heavy Aries types, that independent, got to do it myself. I don't need help. Uh, if you have that pattern, that could also lend to it. I happen to have all three, which is why I'm a hot mess when it comes to this topic. And uh, I hope I made you laugh. <laughs> uh, Lori is saying, I'm not sure where to begin. Oh, I'm sorry that you're going through all that. Lori, we're sending you lots of love. That's a lot to be going through. Um, okay. It is 1153. My class starts at 12 and I do not want to be late to my class because I am learning a branch of astrology that I have been intimidated about all of my life. And I'm finally overcoming that intellectual intimidation and learning horror astrology. And it is stretching my astrological muscles and challenging my brain in such an exciting, yummy way. I love it. Uh, so I do not want to be a bad student and miss my class, but I am sending all of you love. Happy Sunday. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope this was a good astrological food for thought. And let me know in the comments. I will talk to you soon. Bye.